Every time I tried to make it on my own Every time I tried to stand and start to fall And all those lonely roads that I had traveled on There was Jesus When the life I built came crashing to the ground when the friends I had were nowhere to be found I couldn't see it then, but I can see it now There was Jesus In the waiting, in the searching, in the healing and the hurting Like a blessing buried in the broken me Every minute, every moment Where I've been or where I'm going Even when I didn't know it I couldn't see it There was Jesus For this man who needs amazing kind of grace For forgiveness and So I thank God every day that there was Jesus in the waiting, in the searching, in the healing and the hurting, like a blessing buried in the broken pieces. Every man. Valleys. There was Jesus in the shadows of the alleys. There was Jesus in the fire and the flood. There was Jesus always is and always was. No. In the waiting, in the searching, in the
the silence stills my voice you understand me you understand me you come to me in the valley of unknown you understand me you understand me you understand me God you understand me so I throw all my cares before you my doubts and fears don't scare you you're bigger than I thought you were you're bigger than I thought so I stop all negotiations with the God of all creation you're bigger than I thought you were you're bigger underneath you understand me you understand me you understand me God you understand me so I throw all my cares before you my doubts and fears don't scare you you're bigger than I thought you were you're bigger than I thought so I stop all negotiations with the God of all creation. You're bigger than I thought you were. You're bigger than I thought. You're bigger than I thought you were. You're bigger than I thought you were. Father's hands. I will rest in the Father's hands. Leave the rest in the Father's hands. Oh, I will rest. I will rest in the Father's hands. Leave the rest in the Father's hands. Hello, Crosslink. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Uh, it is hard to believe that we have come to the end of our story series. I appreciate all the encouraging 
uh, comments that many of you have given to us of how this has been an encouragement to you and your faith journey and how that you feel like you have grown stronger in your faith and that you even want to, to share your story now because of the testimonies that we've heard. I got to tell you, though, when we sat down to plan out this series, uh, I would have never dreamed that we would have to do the last two sermons online because of myself getting COVID and some of my family members. Uh, but it should not surprise us, really. I mean, when you think about standing for truth and how the enemy doesn't like it when you stand for truth, uh, he's going to come against us. There's something called spiritual warfare that we have to endure when we stand on the truth of God's word. And uh, so we need to plan on that. We need to understand that. And this morning is no different. Uh, you just heard a wonderful, wonderful testimony from Walt Heyer about his story and about how that he is really standing against the culture. You see, the, the culture is trying to dictate human sexuality. The culture is trying to redefine it. it it's trying to redefine gender. And, and the reality is you can't change biology. Uh, God is the one that gives us our identity. You know, as I thought about Satan and how that Satan has just a few bag of tricks and he just keeps pulling them out and kind of repackaging them generation after generation, it, my mind went back to Genesis chapter number three and Adam and Eve in the garden and the serpent walks into the garden, slithers out, but walks into the garden and watch how Satan operated in Genesis chapter three. Notice what he says here. This is not the text this morning, but it'll kind of set the tone. Uh, he, here's what it says in Genesis chapter number three, verse one and two. Now the serpent was more crafty than any other beast of the field that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, did God actually say you shall not eat of the tree in the garden. You see, here's what the enemy wants to do in your life and wants to do in my life. He wants us to doubt what God has already said that he has created as good. He, he wants us to doubt all that. He wants us to doubt God's created order. And so we have to know that. We have to know that there's spiritual warfare. Adam and Eve chose to sin that day. They chose sin over God. And because of that, we have murder. Because of that, we see incest. Because of that, we see those who are struggling with sexual perversion or their sexual identity. These are all things that have come from the consequences of the fall. Now, I, I want to encourage you to do something. If you're a parent or a grandparent uh, or you're a teenager, I want to encourage you to make plans to come out Tuesday night, April the 27th at 630 here at Crosslink. And, and what I want you to do is I want you to come out. Walt's going to be here. He's going to be sharing there at the church uh, from 6.30 on. And he's just going to be doing some Q&A, and he's going to be educating people as to this agenda that is being pushed in our society today. And then how do we respond to it? H how do we love people and encourage people uh, to, to come to know the Lord Jesus Christ? You've heard me say this before. I believe we need to stand on biblical truth, but we don't need to be a jerk about it. And so I want you to come out. We'll talk more about it at the end, just as a reminder. Uh, but come out this coming Tuesday uh, at 630, and I know that God will use that to encourage you. Let me give you a big idea that we're going to talk about today. And it's this. Jesus pursues those who are lost, and so should we. Hey, Jesus is the master at pursuing those whose lives are train wrecks. And because Jesus does that, then we too should do the same thing. Now, when I ask Walt, Walt, give me the story in the Bible that you feel like most resembles your life and your testimony. He said, well, that one's easy. It's Luke chapter number 19. Well, I thought he was doing that because of Zacchaeus and him being a wee little man and Walt's kind of a wee little man too, but that wasn't the reason. And, and as I started reading through it and I started hearing more about his story, I began to understand why Walt wanted us to look at this text. 
So we're going to read through Luke chapter number 19, verses 1 through 10, and then I'm going to give you four truths, biblical truths that come out of this text that really point back to our idea, the big idea of how that Jesus is pursuing us and pursuing sinners, and so should we. So let's read, begin reading in Luke chapter number 19, and let's read through verse number 10. He entered Jericho and was passing through, and behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was rich, and he was seeking to see who Jesus was. But on account of the crowd, he could not because he was small in stature. So he ran on ahead and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was about to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down, for I may stay, I must stay at your house today. So he hurried and came down and received him joyfully. And when they saw it, they all grumbled. He has gone in to be a guest of a man who is a sinner? And Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor, and if I have defrauded anyone of anything, I restore it fourfold. And Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to your house, since he is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save those who are lost. Let me give you four truths like I said, that point back to this big idea that Jesus pursues those who are lost, and so should we. Here's the first truth. We are all sinners like Zacchaeus. You know, that's you, that's me, that's anyone that's ever been born onto the face of this planet. We have been born into a sin condition. When I think about Zacchaeus and I think about his name, the very name Zacchaeus means righteous one, but yet we know that he wasn't righteous, that, that, that in fact he was actually hated by the people of that day. Now let me give you really two reasons why I feel like that Zacchaeus was hated during that day. Number one, it was because he was the chief tax collector. It's one thing to be a tax collector, it's another thing to be the chief tax collector. Think, think of being the mob boss and all these other tax collectors under you, and they're going out, they're swindling people, their own people, the Jewish people, out of their money, they're working for the Romans, and they're swindling all these people out of their money. Well, when they did so, Zacchaeus would always get a cut of that money. And so that also made Zacchaeus, which is the second reason people hated him, he was very, very wealthy. When people looked at his bling bling, they, they knew where the bling bling came from. They knew that he had been taking extra and he'd been stealing from his very own people. Now, th those that were in the crowd that day, those that were there that were the religious crowd, they got one thing right that day, and that is Zacchaeus was a sinner. But what they failed to acknowledge is that they were sinners too that they had some junk in the trunk, that they had a form of godliness that they looked the part, dressed the part, acted the part, but the reality is their heart was far from Jesus. You know, I've had an opportunity over the last week and a half to think a lot about COVID-19. You know, I, I've thought about how that this has really crippled our economy in so many ways. Many of you that are watching, you lost a good paying job because of COVID-19. There, there are others who are watching and you, you have a, a mom or a dad or a grandmother or a grandpa that was in a rest home. And when COVID began to happen, everything shut down and you can no longer go in and see your loved one in the rest home. You, you watched them begin to dwindle away, and you watched it through a window. And, and then there are others. You uh, go to Crosslink, and you have loved ones, a mom or a dad or a, a grandparent that passed away during COVID, and you weren't even able to put them away in a burial. It's been a tough, tough year, year and a half. But, but can I tell you something? 
COVID as bad as it's been, the virus as bad as it's been to so many people in this world, there is a far greater virus that we all deal with. And that virus is called sin. The Bible says it like this, for all, A-L-L, -L, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. It says in Isaiah 64 that our righteousness are as filthy rags. So we all deal with this whole idea of sin. We are all sinners, just like Zacchaeus. My, my grandmother used to say this to me. She said, Ken, I want to remind you of something. Uh, you know, sometimes it's easy to focus on everyone else's sin. Sometimes it's easy to look at what everybody else is doing and their hangups and, and, and the sin that they have in their camp. But Ken, every time you are pointing the finger at someone else, you have three pointed right back at you. We, we need to be reminded that we all are sinners and that's why we need the grace of God applied to our lives. Let, let me give you a second truth. The second truth is Jesus pursues sinners. I, I, I love this in verse number five, <coughs> excuse me, where, where Jesus uh, goes into this whole thing of where he's reaching out to Zacchaeus and he says this, he finds him in the sycamore tree and he responds by saying, and when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down for I must stay at your house today. I love that. I, I love the fact that Jesus was pursuing the sinner. Nobody else was pursuing the sinner, but Jesus was. And folks, this would have been so taboo in the first century because a rabbi absolutely would not interact with a tax collector, especially the chief tax collector. And yet Jesus is pursuing this tax collector. I love Walt's story of Pastor Jeff and how that Pastor Jeff reached out to him, built a friendship with him, even after he found out that Walt was living his life as Laura as a woman, that he still cared enough about him to try to get to know him and, and, and to love him unconditionally. It didn't mean that Pastor Jeff agreed with Walt's sin. It was just simply that he was showing care. And as I said a few weeks ago, we cannot, as a Christian, confuse care with condoning sin. Uh, th this pastor loved Walt and wanted a relationship with him, wanted to know more about him. I love what Walt told me. Walt said, Pastor Jeff used to say, man, you're messy, Walt. And as I thought about that, aren't we all a little bit messy? Aren't you glad that Jesus pursues sinners? Because if that were not the case, you and I would not have experienced the grace of God ourselves. Can you think about this? If, if, if Pastor Jeff had not been modeling his life after Jesus and living for the Lord and pursuing sinners just like Jesus pursued sinners, we may not have ever heard Walt's story that he shared with us today. So Jesus pursues sinners. That's the second truth. Here's the third truth that we need to understand today. And that is this. There will be some who oppose our pursuit of sinners. When you look back at verse number seven, it says, and when they saw it, they all grumbled. He has gone in to be a guest of a man who was a sinner. Now, as I said earlier, there were tons of people in the crowd that day that absolutely hated Zacchaeus. Uh, they, they hated him because that he had been swindling people out of money. But I don't believe those were the people that hated him the most. I believe the people that hated him the most in the crowd that day would have been the religious crowd. It, it would have been those who were there that looked the part, that thought they had it together, but had failed to realize, as I mentioned earlier, that they had sin in the camp too. They carried a, a false sense of piety. Folks, we, we have to be very, very careful that we are not 
carrying a false sense of piety, but we understand how God has saved us. And because we understand his amazing grace, then we too must reach out to those that are sinners and lost and undone without God and his son. We have to be reminded of that. And we also have to be reminded that when we do, there are going to be people that don't like it. V.L. Hall and myself, when we started the church, he and I went down to Florida to a church planting conference. This would have been in 2005, and it was Ron Silva and Nelson Searcy. And I'll never forget something that Ron Silva said. He said, if you're serious as a church planter about reaching lost people, not church people, not people that are just swapping churches and joining churches because they're tired of their own church. If you're serious about reaching people with the gospel right where they are, then there's going to be some people that don't like that. There are going to be some people that don't like the fact that you've invited transgenders to your church, that don't like the fact that you have homosexuals that are attending your church, that don't like the fact that there are people that are alcoholics coming to your church. They, they're not going to like that. And then, then he said this, and it really caught my attention. He said, but the problem with that is, mark my word, the people that don't like it are not lost people. It's people within the church that won't like it. Uh, we need to be reminded of what Luke chapter number 5 verse 32 says. I have not come, Jesus is speaking here, I have not come to call the righteous to repentance, but sinners to repentance. Jesus came to save the lost. And folks, lost people are going to do lost things. We have to plan on that and understand that and be patient because they are, as Pastor Jeff told Walt, they can be messy. I, I pray that you would not be one of those religious people that when you see people coming into our church with hurts, habits, and hangups, you wouldn't throw them to the curb. Sometimes we're the first ones to shoot the wounded in our churches, but that you would love them, that you would reach out to them, and you would get to know them and hear their story, and that God would use your story to impact their life, much like what God has done in Walt's life. May, may we be the kind of people that are more concerned about lost people and reaching them with the gospel than we are about what people are going to think when we do. You know, I, I've often thought this. If, if somebody is not opposing me, then I get concerned. But when I know that someone is opposing me and what we're trying to do to reach lost people, then it just tells me that we're doing some things right. And it'll be the same in your life. I want to encourage you to begin to reach out and don't, don't worry about what people think or say about you. And when you do that, you will be maligned. When you reach people that don't look like you, when you reach people that are, are, are dealing with hurts, habits, and hangups, there will be some that throw you under the bus. But just remember that Jesus pursues sinners and so should we, and that when you do, mark my word, there will be some that will oppose it. Here, here's a fourth truth that I want to give you today before we end our time, and it's this. There is no sinner too far gone for Jesus to redeem. I want to read this to you. They're found in verses 9 and 10 that we just read a few moments ago in Luke 19. Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house since he is a son of Abraham. For the son of man came to seek and to save the lost. I love that because it tells us who Jesus came to save. He didn't come to save people that had it all together. Because the reality is none of us, none of us, zero have it all together. He, he came to save people whose lives were falling apart. Think about it this way. That day when the people were pressing in to hear Jesus teaching in Luke 19, Zacchaeus comes up and nobody would let him get close to Jesus. They were pushing him away. They didn't want, they didn't want him to get close to Jesus because they hated him and they didn't think that they made a terrible assumption that day. They made an assumption that Jesus could not redeem this person because he was too far gone. 
And folks, it's just not the case. Uh, what we see here is him climbing up into the sycamore tree because he wanted to get a glimpse of Jesus. Now, I need to say this. So often we hear this story, and there's cute songs about it. Uh, Zacchaeus was a wee little man, and a wee little man was he. But I'm convinced that this story is not about a wee little man. This story is about a great big God who loves you and loves people, and he wants to redeem their life, and nobody is too far gone for Jesus to save. His, his spirit can impact the life of anyone no matter how far gone they are. And we need to be reminded of that, that, that God's love reaches further down than we can reach up, that God saves from the uttermost, and I heard one pastor say, to the guttermost. His love is unconditional. You know, I, I, I love what, um, what Walt shared with me in, in a private moment. He, he was talking to me about the church that he went to before Pastor Jeff's church. And how that he had started going to this church, the pastor had reached out to him. He was going there as Laura. And he said that the pastor invited him over to his house and, and, and invited him over for dinner. Walt obliged and went to the pastor's house, showed up on the front porch, knocked on the door, said that the pastor came out of the house and met him outside. Obviously, he had found out that Laura was not Laura, but Laura was really Walt. And that he was just simply living as a woman. And I'll never forget what Walt told me. So the pastor looked at him and said, you're not welcome at our church. We, we don't accept your kind. And I love what Walt asked him. Well, if you don't accept my kind, then what kind do you accept? If you don't accept people whose lives are falling apart, whose lives are broken, who people who are looking for hope, then who do you accept is what he wanted to know. What a great, great question. Let me ask you this question. What kind of church is Crosslink? What kind of church are you wanting Crosslink to be? Are we going to be the kind of church that stands on truth and preaches the word? That's my question for you. As I think about Walt's story, and I think about had Walt not had Jesus pursuing him the whole time, and not had a pastor, Pastor Jeff, that was willing to pursue him, even at his worst, where would he be today? We, we would not have a, a man that is living his life now to show the redemption of Almighty God that has a ministry that literally reaches millions of people because of God's redemptive hand in his life. So I'm grateful that we have a God who loves us unconditionally because the Bible says that the Son of Man has come to seek and to save those who are lost. Let me ask you a, a few questions, but before I do, let me remind you of the big idea. And that is simply this, that Jesus is Jesus pursues those who are lost, and so should we. Jesus is our example. He pursues those who are lost, and we want to live our lives in such a way that honors Christ in that way. We want to be a church that is pursuing people that are lost because Jesus can save anyone. Let me ask you a couple questions in closing today. Here's the first question. Are you pursuing those the world has discarded? Are you pursuing those who are the outcast in our society? Those that are the throwaways? Are you working to develop a friendship with people that you may know? Maybe it's a family member. Maybe it's someone you work with. Maybe it's someone that you go to school with. You know, Christ calls us out of our comfort zone. We heard that from Pastor Greg last Sunday. And he does so, so that we can go after those people and pursue them like Jesus does. And here's the second question. Do you need to accept the fact that he's pursuing you? 
Do you, do you need to rest in that and understand that God's Spirit is drawing you to a, the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ? No matter what you've done or where you've been, no matter the sin that you're involved in right now, He wants a relationship with you. Are you accepting that right now? See, I believe this. Some of you are watching this broadcast today. You're watching this online, and you feel convicted. You feel convicted of your sin. You tuned in for whatever reason, but you are watching today, and the Holy Spirit of God is drawing you to salvation. Do you realize this? A person cannot be saved unless the Spirit of God is drawing them to salvation. The Bible says that today is the day of salvation. So if you're here today and you have never trusted Christ, you're watching online, I want to give you that opportunity. Just pray this to the Lord in your own words. The prayer doesn't save you, but God sees the posture of your heart. Here we go. Dear Jesus, I realize that I'm a sinner. I ask you to forgive me of all my sins. I believe, Lord, on Jesus Christ alone for my eternal security. I trust that you died, that you were buried, and that you came back to life the third day. I not only believe that, but I receive that into my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I want to thank you so much for tuning in today. And if you could let us know if you made a decision for Christ, we would love to know that. Uh, you simply go on our website, go to the connection card or download the church app. If you don't have that, go to the connection card and just let us know that you had trusted Christ today. Or maybe you want to grow in your faith and uh, you want to follow the Lord and believers baptism. We, we have an opportunity for you to sign up for that on there. Or maybe it's just that you want to grow deeper in your faith and you want to be able to go after those people that Jesus loves. Uh, then you can maybe sign up on there for G3, and we would love to go through G3 discipleship with you and, and have that opportunity. I want to thank everybody for continued giving. Obviously, the last two Sundays, we've not been able to meet in person, so it is my encouragement to you to make sure that you give. Uh, just like you were there, you can go online and give. You can give from the app, or some of you may choose to just give extra. Give that amount that you had set aside when you get back to church, and that would be much appreciated. The, the ministry continues on, and uh, we thank God for that. Let me remind you, don't forget, this coming Tuesday night, Walt Heyer will be here, or excuse me, not here, not in my backyard, but he will be at Crosslink at 630. Uh, I want... I want to challenge every parent uh, that has a kid, uh, every, well, if you're a parent, you do have a kid, but every parent, uh, every, every teenager, every senior adult, every grandparent, come out and see what God is doing through this man. And here, uh, you know, I think we're going to be educated. We're going to learn a lot about this whole issue of transgenderism and how we can stand on biblical truth but at the same time, uh, not be a jerk about it. And uh, so I encourage you to come out, uh, make it a point, to make it a priority. Your kids deserve it. And we as parents need to be educated and know how to help our kids in this way. God bless you. Thank you so much for tuning in today. We love you and look forward to seeing you Tuesday night.